This is problem 2.93, and we like to find the natural frequency. And here we have a uniform slender rod of mass F and length L. And it's hindered at a point A and is attached to four linear springs and one torsional spring, as shown in the figure. The values for K, K torsional, mass, and length are given. Let's start by doing our free body diagram. We have active forces and reactive forces. The only active force is the weight, and then we have the reactive forces at the pin, which is two, four, two reactions, and the four springs and the torsional spring. We have, if this is our coordinate system, we see that if we have our bar moving clockwise, that will be negative. So the forces at the pin are AX and AY. Then I have the weight located at the center of mass of the bar at a distance D of the point A. I have the force of the linear spring as K times the linear displacement. The linear displacement is the distance times sine of theta. In this case, it's L over 3 for the two springs that are above. And then for the two springs that are below, will be K times 2L over 3 sine of theta is the linear displacement of that point. And then I have the other spring is also K over 2L over 3 sine of theta. Then I have also the moment created by the torsional spring, which is constant of the spin time theta. Now let's do our equations of motion. For that, I will use that the sum of the moments, external moments, is equal to the inertia moments. In this case, the inertia moment can be taken as the negative because that's how we chose our coordinate system of the mass moment of inertia times the as angular acceleration. So let's do the external moments. The first is the torsional spring which is torsional spring by like theta. And then to take the moment of the other spring, I have to get the distance. The distance for the ones that are above is L over 3 cosine of theta, and there are two springs. The distance times the force, and the force is L over 3 sine of theta k. And the ones below is 2 again, 2 springs, is 2L over 3 cosine of theta times L 2L over 3 sine of theta k. And now the moment produced by the weight will be the distance times sine of theta times the force, right? And that will be equals to the inertia moment, which is the mass moment of inertia times the angular acceleration. Now let's calculate the mass moment of inertia and the location of the center of mass. The center of mass is in the middle of the bar, but at a distance d from the point A. The, the point A is at one third of the A end of the bar and the center of mass is at L half. So we subtract L half minus L Three, and we get that the distance is L over 6. To get the mass moment of inertia respect to A, I will use the parallel axis theorem. And that will be the mass moment of inertia of the center of mass, which you know from the table that is 112 mass times L squared, plus the mass times the distance squared. So that gives me 112 m L squared plus m 1 over 36 m L squared. I add those two and I get that that's 4 over 36 m L squared, which is equals to 1 ninth m all over L squared. Now let's continue with our equation of motion. And we will use a simplification for small angular displacements and the cosine of theta becomes 1 
and the sine of theta can be approximated to theta. So if we do those substitutions, we get 1 ninth ml squared, which is the mass moment of inertia respect to point A times the angular acceleration. And I will um, add all the values that will be multiplied by theta. So it will be the constant of this rotational spring plus 2 times L over 3 squared plus 2 times 2 L over 3 squared K plus mgl over 6. All those values are multiplied by theta, which was the previous sign of theta. And we can further simplify this as 10 over 9 L squared times k. And the value for the weight, which is ML, mgl over 6. As you see here, this is our equation of motion for this system. And this provides us the equivalent constant of the spring and the equivalent mass. With that, we can calculate the natural frequency, which is the square root of the equivalent constant of the spring divided by the equivalent constant. Uh, the mass constant. So if we substitute all these values, we get an expression for the natural frequency. So the equivalent constant of the spring in the numerator and then divided by the equivalent mass. And this is the expression for the natural frequency. The problem gives us the values for the constant of the rotational spring, which is 1,000 newtons meters over radians. Then the constant of the frame is 2,000 newtons over meters. Then we have the length of the bar is 5 meters and the mass is 10 kilograms. Let's substitute all these values. 1,000 plus 10 over 9, 5 squared times 2,000 plus mass, which is 10, times gravity, which is 9 9.8981, times 5 over 6, divided by 1 one ninth, 10, 5 squared. And if we calculate this, we get that the natural frequency of this system is 45.15 radians over second. And here we see the total solution for this problem. in which we calculate the equation of motion and then with the equivalent constant of the spring and the equivalent constant of mass we were able to calculate the natural frequency of the system.